Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Twitter ban in Nigeria still made the news as it continued to elicit passionate reactions from amongst many citizens. Those reactions came up on the sidelines of the 2021 edition of Social Media Hangout, an avenue for stakeholders to have a consistent awareness on the abuse of social media and equally have a better understanding of how it works. Plus TV Africa's correspondent Uchechi Ubuwe Hidano was there and now reports. In what seemed like a prophetic gathering, Nigerian youths meet to discuss the inherent advantages of social media platforms in a digital age, as well as issues militating against their use. This comes barely 24 hours after the operation of popular microblogging and social networking service, Twitter, was suspended indefinitely in Nigeria by the federal government. Ace actor and comedian Debo Adedayo, popularly known as Mr. Macaroni, states his grievances on this development. However, veteran Nollywood actor and film producer Yemi Sholade says it is partly a good action by the government. This is a democracy. We are not in a military regime. It's a democracy. So when you have people expressing their views, when you have people expressing their opinions, and then the next thing you say you ban Twitter. Tomorrow they ban Instagram, they ban Facebook, they ban everything. Then let's know we are in full military regime. Where the people's voice are being stiffened and they cannot be heard. That the Western world would think that our president amounts to nothing on social media. Uh, that, that, that is a huge slap on us, General. not only the president now, all of us. I don't feel anything about Twitter being banned in Nigeria, at least for now. We don't know how long it will take, but I think it's a welcome development. At least there will be a semblance of sanity from that angle for now. Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Lagos State, Benga Omotosho, vehemently corroborates the federal government's stand. I think I read my news very well. I never knew and I never heard and I never saw that Twitter was banned. I only heard of uh, about a temporary suspension, not a ban. So if there is a ban, I mean, what I would say would be different from what I would say if there is a temporary suspension. I suspect that, uh, well, government felt uh, Twitter did something that wasn't right by taking down the president's uh, uh, tweet, and then uh, the, the government to use its power and came hard on a, on a, on a Twitter. However, the majority of Nigerians who use Twitter form part of the most vocal and politically active segment of the population. Uchechi Obwehi Daniel, reporting for Plus TV Africa. To World Environment Day now. For long, humans have been exploiting and destroying the planet's ecosystems, and the loss is depriving the world of carbon sinks at a time humanity can at least afford it. At an event held at St. Xavier School, which the U.S. initiated in partnership with the Lagos state government, uh, stakeholders gathered to support the tree planting initiatives and provide safe environment in society. Plus TV correspondent Ngozika Ohai Jesse has more on this report. June 5th is dedicated to mark the World Environmental Day, which is celebrated to create awareness among people in order to conserve the environment for a healthy and better future. The theme for this year is the ecosystem restoration, which means preventing, halting and reversing damages to go from exploiting nature to healing it. The U.S. consulate, who is represented by the acting consul general, Brandon Hotspeth, spoke on the importance of tree planting in Nigeria and how children are powerful agents for change. As we recognize these efforts um, around the country to here in Lagos to provide safe, clean drinking water, healthy places to live and work and to learn and play. And I think that these kids are a remarkable example of how all of us can work to achieve those causes. So um, in providing support for this initiative, the U.S. government has demonstrated its belief that real solutions to Africans' problems are best developed by Africans. And what I would say is that, you know, we are excited, frankly, to partner with St. Xavier on this activity. Um, the, as we know, children have the potential to be powerful agents of change. And by focusing on school-age children, giving them tools and knowledge to change behaviors, 
future generations will be better prepared to care for the environment. Other speakers at the event educated the students of St. Xavier School on how they can achieve ecosystem restoration. Ecosystem means everything in the world, in the water, on the land, in the air, you, me, the trees, the butterflies. How many people have seen a butterfly before? Where? In school or at home? Sorry? So a butterfly is an important part of the ecosystem. Now, what I'm here to tell you is, if we disrupt any part of the ecosystem, if we disturb it and we, we unbalance it, our lives will be unbalanced. Through growing trees, greening cities, you know, um, rewilding gardens, cleaning up our rivers, we can also achieve it by using renewable energy. So it is important to remind ourselves as we are here today that the global community is set to adopt a set of sustainable development goals that has replaced Millennium Development Goal. Environmental activists say only healthy ecosystems can enhance people's livelihood, counteract climate change, and stop the collapse of biodiversity. According to the facilitator of the event, they hope for a mindset change, attitude change, and a better environment in Nigeria. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika Ohaichesi. Now, a report by United Nations has it that emergence of COVID-19 has shown just how disastrous the consequences of ecosystem loss can be by shrinking the area of natural habitat, not just for humans, but also for animals. Now to the alleged illegal demolition. Nigerian Automobile Technicians Association of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Federation of Informal Workers Organization of Nigeria, has demanded the illegal demolition of mechanic villages and workshop across the state be discontinued. Destiny Momo has more. This group has come to agitate, make demands, and make their voices heard to the Lagos State Government over what it termed illegal demolition of mechanic villages in Surulere and Odo, Ladipo, Oshodi, Mushi, and countless others scattered around the state. This has forced them to be pushed to Ekpe and Badagri axis. They say Latif Jakande made it possible for informal workers to be rightly positioned in mechanic villages in 1981. The chairman of Nigerian Automobile Technician Association of Nigeria, Lagos Chapter, and other council members accused a special advisor to Governor Babajide Songwolu on transport for the demolition of the various mechanic villages and other accusations. The workshop that Alagi Jakonde have given us since 1981, they did not improve, the, the predecessor governor, they did not improve on it. We've been paying our taxes. Who pay permits to the government, all sorts of, all sort of revenue, all right, brought to us. We've been hearing to, be, we've been answering to that. So what we want to know, what are our our offenses that they now feel we are not suitable to be on that land? Whenever they give us a permanent allocation, they should leave it for us. Not that they give us permanent allocation today and tomorrow, and another government will come. They say that okay, they are in need of that place, but when that place was in a water lodge. They will not remember that place until when mechanic freed that place. The protest which started from Allen Junction culminated at the State House of Assembly, Yalausa. They are received by some members of the House of Assembly, including member representing Ojo Constituency 1, Ulushegun Akande. We received the letter officially on behalf of Negotian and we shall ensure that the House sit on it and take necessary action. The artisans who came out in their thousands say they are ready to continue this protest until their voices are heard. Determined not to take no for an answer, the members of NATA stood their ground amidst heavy downpour, agitating for the removal of Toin Fainka. <laughs> the Covenant of Sustainable Developmental Goal 
new urban agenda of the United Nations and international labor standards on occupational safety recommendations urges the government to respect the rights of informal workers. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Well, it is hoped that the petitioners get justice. And finally, President Mohamed Bouhari has commissioned the $1.5 million, 157-kilometer uh, Lagos Ibadan Standard Gauge Railway project for full commercial activities in Lagos. During his visit to Lagos, the president also commissioned the Integrated National Security and Waterways Protection Infrastructure, also known as the Blue Project. The two correspondents have more. Take a look. The Ebu Temeta station, known as the Mobalaji Johnson Station, is the largest railway station in West Africa with a holding capacity of 6,000 passengers. The construction, which started in March 2017, commenced test running in December 2020. And here on this day is the official commissioning ceremony which kick-started with the presence of President Mohamed Bouhari who stresses that his administration is committed to developing a modern national railway network that will connect every part of Nigeria. According to him, it will promote trade, interstate trips, tourism, commerce and national integration. From the beginning of this administration, railway infrastructure development has been given the priority it deserves, and various milestones have been reached right from when the Abuja Kaduna Railway was flagged off for commercial operation in 2016 to this Lagos Ibadan Railway project being commissioned today for full commercial operation. I will at this juncture command the Honorable Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Rotuni Chubike Amechi, for his drive and tenacity to achieve the milestone recorded today. What many may not know, this infrastructure development project has faced so many challenges in the course of its execution and delivery. And without the full support and steadfast encouragement of Mr. President, this event would not have taken place today. We're building the foundation that the federal government has laid for us to create opportunity for teaming negotiations to travel effectively and efficiently across the metropolis. We're building six train terminals along this corridor and we're building four overpasses along this, along this corridor. For those who say I make sure you have tried, I always tell them that if you change focus from transport, next semester will be better than transport. It is because you have focused on transportation and that you fund it that you are here that that and that is a good place. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, spoke on the controversial China loan and the benefit thereof. Yes, it's true, we do borrow, but we borrow to invest in, infra to invest in infrastructure. People who have been complaining about our borrowings have failed to ask us, what are we doing with the borrowings? We have borrowed today, in 50 years' time, this iconic building will still be there. The flag off of the project by the president was next. Thereafter, he proceeded to the Energy Nature Light Terminal of Apapa Port to further commission the Integrated National Security and Waterways Protection Infrastructure, otherwise known as the Deep Blue Project. The official flag off of the Deep Blue Project took place with the attendance of the Commander-in-Chief President Muhammadu Buhari, the Ministers of Transportation and Defense, Rutimi Amechi and Bashir Magashi respectively, and other dignitaries. The project was created to improve the security situation of the country and help provoke the prosperity of the Nigerian maritime industry. This project has been initiated to bolster the maritime security architecture and ensure greater enforcement action within Nigerian waters and beyond. The Deep Blue Project is a critical step towards the realization of maritime security in the region, 
which underscores Nigeria's commitment in providing the necessary framework and resources in cooperation with other nations and maritime users. The Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, stated that the project is his brainchild and has helped improve the security atmosphere of the country. Mr. President, I laid claim to this project. It was my entire idea. I didn't sit with anybody. It was my idea. And I can tell you why. As a governor in the South-South, they were killing and maiming in the water. And I knew that they shouldn't continue. So the day you appointed me as Minister for Transportation in charge of maritime, I knew that I had to do something very important to find a solution to that. Yes, let's see, Mr. President, when we took over, we were number three in the world in maritime insecurity. Now we are number one. But from what record we are having, we've begun to make progress. The host of the event, the Director General of NIMASA, Dr. Bashir Yusuf, commended President Buhari for giving his approval while stating that several sea pirates had been prosecuted due to the suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses bill signed into law by the President. Mr. President, sir, today the maritime aid industry expresses gratitude for you signing the suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses, SPOMO Act 2019 into law, the first of its kind in the entire Gulf of Guinea that is past becoming a model for other African maritime nations. Under this law, we have successfully prosecuted, convicted, and sentenced about 10 offenders for the first time. The project would help move forward the Nigerian maritime industry and help the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, operate at international standard. Reporting for Plus TV Africa, Adebanke Odunui. It's a wrap now, but before we go, let's to remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram and to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubiuku. Thanks for watching.